to Toku Tech, please subscribe, comment, like, and share. Thank you very much. Welcome back. So today we're going to look at DHCP failover. In server 2012 and extended into server 2016 and on, basically you can fail over DHCP service. You configure one DHCP server with all its scopes, install DHCP service on another server, and point to it and say, I want to make this a hot standby. So we're going to work through that lab right now. So you see we have Active Directory, we have a domain controller, two DHCP servers, and like I demonstrated, there is a DHCP client. This TUS Sync 1 is basically a DHCP client. We'll show here that uh, it can't get an IP address right now. I've turned off the DHCP service on my router, so there's no possible way to get IP addresses from any other source. You can get away with this for a little while because DHCP clients generally renew their IP address at half of the lease time. And if you have a lease time of an hour, then you've got 30 minutes to turn off a DHCP service and perform a test like this. One of the URLs that I reference is PowerShell for DHCP. Check out all the links below in the description. Okay, we're installing the DHCP service on TUS DHCP 1. So one line of this script is a registry hack to tell server manager that DHCP is indeed configured. Let's check and see if server manager thinks DHCP server is configured. Yeah, you see here, just installing the service from the script doesn't clear the flag. And even though we've configured a scope and we're serving DHCP, server manager still thinks we haven't configured a DHCP server. This registry entry here will clear that flag and here you see that configure DHCP server flag is cleared. I'm going to go ahead and install the DHCP service on the DHCP2 server. Again on DHCP2 we're not going to configure it or install any scopes or anything. We're just going to do all that work on DHCP1. Going to apply the same treatment to DHCP Server 2. Authorize the DHCP server in Active Directory. Check for a list of servers that are authorized for DHCP in Active Directory. And clear that registry entry so that Server Manager knows to turn off the flag to configure DHCP server. Okay, we got both of our DHCP servers in Active Directory. And here you can see there's two DHCP servers authorized. Now we're not configuring any scopes on DHCP2. We're going to do all of our configuration on DHCP1. This is real simple. Don't overthink it. So let's add a scope to DHCP Server 1. I'm essentially replacing the scope that was on the router that I switched the DHCP server off. Again, you'll find a link to installing DHCP service using PowerShell in the description below. So we're going to go into DHCP Manager and look at the DHCP scope. Remarkably, there's already a bunch of clients with assigned IP addresses. Even our poor little TUS Sync 1 server already has a registration in DHCP. I was actually kind of caught off guard by that. We can see the various scope and server options. I'm going to go ahead and go on to TUS Sync 1 and do an IP config release renew and IP config all just to verify for double sure sure that this is the DHCP server I'm getting my DHCP lease from. Release, renew, got an address. And you can see here that TUS DHCP1 is my DHCP server. We're going to configure failover. Go to the IPv4 node, right click, configure failover. We want to use all of the scopes. We're going to select the other server that we want as the 
hot standby node, and that's TUSDHCP2. Now we're going to configure failover, and here we're going to go to hot standby mode. You have to put in a password for the relationship. Watch closely as this runs, it will actually configure a scope on TUSDHCP2 and reserve a percentage of the addresses for TUSDHCP2. So on TUSDHCP2, again, we only installed the service and authorized the server. This failover configuration is what added the scope. And you'll see even the lease information is in there. Okay, so now we got a test failover. So we're gonna go back to TUSDHCP1. Right click on the server node. And we're gonna stop the DHCP service. Now we're going to go to our DHCP client, TUS Sync 1. To an IP config release, IP config renew, and IP config all. And we'll verify our DHCP server is indeed TUS DHCP2. See that right here. Okay, so it failed over. And we still were able to renew our IP address. I'm going to start the service again on TUS DHCP1 and see if we fail back. Go back to our DHCP client, TUS Sync 1. We'll do our IP config release renew again. IP config all. And again, we see we got our lease from TUS DHCP1. Okay, so you can see just how simple it is to configure DHCP failover. Make sure to check out these articles. Follow the links in the description below. Thank you very much.